Oh, I see. I just need to get that sign. Yeah. Thank you so much. Precision. This counts in camera work. It's good. I took a picture once, okay. and it was good because of precision. I found out later that it wasn't me, it was the camera. Uh, so I went around. Another day. Boy, they have some. Did you see that? I saw a camera. Now that we have nothing to do for a few minutes, what do you think of those? Shall we agree that there are a number of points being made prior to Socrates sitting down at the banquet? Yes. Or formally from the book. From page 70 to 74. Three pages, agree? Okay. Mm -hmm. What? Four pages, seven, seven, one, seven, two, seven. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to make the claim that they're all decorative and we're going to ignore them. <laughs> right? Wait a minute now. Regardless of my claim or your claim, <clears throat> Should we at least be able to say uh, there are a definite number of them? Mm. What do you think? Yes. So, uh, yeah, I, I think so. Especially, this is the one time that Socrates is dressed up. I mean, he is really dressed up. Yep. So that means that this has got to be something the really dude important. dude is dressed up. Okay. It's right. got to be something really important for Socrates to be dressed up. Yep. That's why we need this question. If you want to say it's essential, on what basis are you going to say that it's an essential feature? He's making an special occasion because he never dresses. Of course, but well, that's that the essential point. In the dialogue. That's why, in my edition, the uh, my edition, they cut out these pages as insignificant. That's interesting. Or they might be significant, and on what basis shall we claim that they're significant? Dress up when you go to the house. Well, right, the statement was just made. Mm -hmm. right. How shall, to what shall we attribute? To, to what standard shall we appeal to, to say, oh no, that's an important feature, the one that Lyndon just made. That the author, Plato, goes to certain length to describe the difference between the way he is usually and that evening. Because of that great Chinese sage, what was his name, Barbara? So what? Yeah. Yes. What was he famous for? So what? Yeah. Yeah. His philosophy. Yeah. Well, if I was going to give a talk on Aphrodite or go to hang out with people that were talking about Aphrodite, I might want to look my best. He didn't know okay. that. Well, he references okay. Agnon the fact that he wanted to, he wanted to dress to meet Agnon's standards as well. That was one of the one of the other points that was made that he was dressed in his finery, so he could be as attractive to Agamemnon. Okay. What are we saying? Whatever right? conclusion you come to, right. there are a bunch of other points that we could ask the very same question to right. each one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. But how many? <laughs> how many of them? After we get how many of them? Can we say this then? It therefore, implies some significance. Mm. Because it, like, it seems like we started with a few last week. Uh, could, we could. Would you agree also, uh, just to take up some time, some people were working on the table, mm -hmm. and I imagine you finished it? Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, no. What is this? Uh, no. <laughs> you didn't get enough help? Uh, no. I got distracted. You got distracted. I hope it was a good distraction. Yeah, it wasn't. All right, okay. <laughs> so, come on. Mm. 
All right, let me ask you another one. What was it like trying to fulfill the demands of that table? Remember the table? Yeah. yeah. List of characters mm -hmm. in the dialogue. Description <coughs> of poverty, plenty, love. And Aphrodite. We also want to know from wisdom to ignorance. Such that you then should be able to create a table and you should then be able to sit back and say the following people appear most like, least like, <coughs> and have references in order to fill out the table. Do you agree that should be the goal? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was interested, therefore, wouldn't you agree it's very simple to write here on the board? I did it very quickly. You did. <laughs> no, no, no. Was it that easy for you to do it? No. 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 Why not? All it takes is reading. Right. Well, I didn't give myself enough time to get oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. You have time for other things, though? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh. And they were all more valuable than this this assignment. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they got done first. I mean, something has to come first. Those came first, but they were all equally very valuable to me. If they're all equally valuable, you live a great life. <laughs> if all the things in her life are as equally valuable as Plato's Symposium, here's to her. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Um, well, I had a problem too with some different things. I think I mentioned them to you a couple of things, like um, <clears throat> like uh, in the in opening pages uh, Apollodorus is Apollodorus, there's some, he relates a conversation where Glaucon, mm -hmm. turns out to be Glaucon, was behind him and says, hello, you Falarian there um, and he stops, right? Okay, does that mean that Glaucon is following him? Right? Because it, but certainly behind him. Behind him and comes up to and him. Comes up to is him. seeking him out, <clears throat> right? So, so that and uh, so things like um, one of the characters says that Agathon is wisest, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you put that down that he's wisest, then he looks like um, he looks like that he fits in that category of wisdom, for one thing, mm -hmm. and also that um, he fits where it says successful coveter of wisdom, that's characteristic of plenty and mm -hmm. of love. Well, then, does he fit there because of that? Okay. So I had some things where I had question marks, yep. you know, like which, which ones yeah. fit. Did you finish it? <coughs> Not finished. Okay, okay. So we can still work on it? Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Is that, that true? That's the case? Right. Okay. Right. By the way, did we not go further and say we should also be able to compare it against the four very important ideas? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ignorance. Mm -hmm. Right opinion. Oh, understanding. Wisdom, understanding, wisdom, right opinion, wisdom. and ignorance. Knowledge. Mm -hmm. no. Knowledge. Wisdom. So we should be able to see how that functions as well, should we not? Mm. No. What, I'm curious as to what, what brought those into the picture, or what, like, I, was, I haven't been here, so, I, so how those came into question, and why, we're, and why we're choosing to imply those within the symposium, and how that applies to the characters, I'm not clear on. Okay. I, largely because that's something that I know comes out of the Republic, at least comes out of the Republic to a high degree. So for us to be utilizing it in the symposium. Uh, it's in Diotima's speech. Oh, oh okay. In it. okay. It's in this, okay. It's great in point, speech. which is that should we also use other dialogues as a way of helping you understand this one, especially the role of Glaucon? Okay. Yeah, yeah. since he's in three of them, yeah. There's a... I, I brought that question up when we were discussing the... Pardon me, bladder? 
I brought the question up about the divided line looking like oh. some of this, and I was going, are we because of the mean analogy between love, poverty, you know, uh, uh, what is it, love, or no? Okay. Plenty, poverty, love, and wisdom. Plenty, poverty, love, and Aphrodite. Aphrodite, well, okay. Okay, so I have Okay, but speak. you have to see whether or not these are being used in the same way. But that's what I'm saying. Because that's the question that I asked, yeah. and that's how it came to be, is that I'm going, this looks kind of like, you know, a, the mean analogy and the divided line, and then you went in that direction. Because that's picture thinking, is to, yeah. right? That's different these could equally be, if these two can be said to be the same in some fundamental way, yes. then you have a mean analogy similar to the divided line in Plato's Republic. But the issue was, are these two elements the same in the divided line in Plato's Republic? And the answer is no. 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 Or you'd have to do some kind of reflection and try to build the case for it. But at this point, they're different in terms of names. Right. No. Like, um, how many how many people do you know among your closest friends would you call ignorant? Depending upon the time and the place, <laughs> people pass in and out of that state, <laughs> myself included. Ignorant of what? Exactly. No. The truth. Not ignorant of what. Okay. The way he's using the term ignorance, how many people do you know that would fit that description? A lot. Oh. Not knowing that they don't know. Does he in some way describe what he means by those terms? If you did find them, you would then be asked whether or not you could use that to see whether or not that description of ignorance matches certain people you know, maybe even yourself. Myself, yeah. Ooh. Well, okay. All right, all right, all right. Well, then. Good, good. Well, then, since we have nothing to do, and it's early, right? So we haven't started yet. Let's start. We right? can do we other don't start until 10. Oh. We'll start early. Right. 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 Uh, well, is it possible for The same person to be in each of uh, poverty, plenty, love, and Aphrodite in each in the dialogue. All right, do it again, please. Is it possible to have one person participate or be one each of those characters in the dialogue? And I'm thinking of that analogy where Socrates moves from asking questions to Diotima to ending up being di Diotima to Agathon. Why are you asking a question but that you know the answer to? Well, we haven't looked at it. When, when, why are you asking a question you know the answer to? Mm. Well, we've never looked at it that way, or I haven't seen it presented that way. Pardon. Is it, come on, is it a question or do you have an answer to it? Do you have an answer? It's a rhetorical oh, I question, see. isn't it? I see. As I'm thinking, I see that it's possible to right. place the same person no, no, in okay. each of those, Thank and you. I was thinking so right. Socrates. How many people are like that, by the way? Socrates oh. is one. Oh, okay. So you go ahead and you explain it, won't you? How it fits all the others. As How well. he fits each yeah, one. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. That's good reading. And then and someone later will ask you to demonstrate it with certain data. Right, right. Good, 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 good. And good. then Alcibiades is... No. Yeah, he goes through something. Okay. I lost that last mumble, but I'll walk away. Well, I mean, Alcibiades moves from... Well, I'm sorry. No. From poverty to... Okay. So since we have nothing else to do, why don't we just read the last paragraph, or the entrance of Socrates into the dialogue, which is at uh, three and a half, seventy-three and a half. 
after this. Got it? <clears throat> after after what? Seventy three? Oh sorry. Page seventy. Seventy. Okay. Seventy three. After this, he said, they fell to. But no Socrates appeared. Agathon kept on giving orders to send for him, but my friend would not let him. However, he did come. After not so long a delay as usual, and found them about the middle of the diner or the dinner. Then Agathon, who was reclining on the lowest seat alone, on the right, said, This way, Socrates, come by me. I want to get a hold of you to enjoy that wise thought which came to you in the porch, for it's clear you found it, and have it still, or you would never have come away. Right. Now, this is a perfectly good example of something that's not relevant to anything, right? It's the transition, right? It's mm -hmm. the transition that brings Socrates then into the banquet. So insofar as he's standing in the porch and okay. he has a thought, oh. right? A wise thought. He could be said to be playing certain roles within the myth, right? Of oh. Eros. I mean, of that myth of Eros, which it looks to me like he could be playing plenty mm -hmm. because he was involved in standing in the porch. But then now he's walking into the room, so does that mean he's, if, insofar as he may have that wise thought, what, was, what does that mean? I don't know. I'm baffled. Well, poverty's Good. Always, poverty's always thinking no, no. about poverty. But you filled in several <laughs> items, right? So right. That won't yeah, but he's, yes, to but he's... To it. And right. he sits by Agatha. Oh, yeah. yeah. yes. Poverty's in the doorway, but 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 well, poverty is doesn't pass out. With in 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 drunk on nectar, yeah. like plenty does. Okay. Right. So I don't. That's. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just in terms of where Socrates is at that point in the story, hanging about doorways, until he's until he comes to until he sees something or. Uh, uh, Sure. Until he find, finds what he was looking for, so to speak, he's he's at, he's functioning as poverty, and then he's hanging about doorways. <clears throat> okay. Uh, sometimes the question is, how do you nail down a point rather than let it escape? Yeah. Right. So <coughs> I ignore the fact that a good point was made. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because I don't want to nail it down for someone. Well, if we want to look I at... I mean, it. that wouldn't be fair. Yeah. Good. 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 Okay, look here. Would you agree? Here's the myth. Here's the myth. There's several features in the myth that you have identified that are possible then to say uh, tentatively, right? It appears at this point, it appears that Socrates is similar to poverty in the doorway, mm -hmm. as Socrates is plenty in... With respect to perhaps getting absorbed in that right. divine thought, right. wise thought. On the banquet. 
Yeah, he doesn't need to eat. Mm. That's that. Come he's standing between both worlds, <coughs> just like his myth is going to later. So he's making a dramatic presentation of what he's going to say later. In one essence, I mean, that's what I got out of the picture. Okay, then you're he's, saying... He's between worlds. No, you're saying, if you put this together, then Socrates is dramatically representing in himself the features of the myth. Yes. Mm -hmm. All of them? We only have a few? Well, primarily... Right? You have a good reason to object. Just on a few, we can't conclude that, can we? <laughs> no. No, no, no. So we'll get people to contribute yeah. so that we can make that conclusion. Come on, people. Right, right, right. And if so, it should be exhausted, should it not? Mm. Okay. Now remember, every dialogue, every dialogue has the problem of appearance and reality. Every dialogue, appearance and reality, one and many, always. And it's contained right there in that paragraph. Right there it is. He presents it in the first paragraph. Socrates then appears in the banquet. Right? Good. Where? That was your point, I think you ought to tell us. <laughs> I need help. I forgot the point I was going to make, so I thought you guys would fill it in for me. Well, he might appear like poverty and be plenty, or he might appear like plenty and be poverty. There could be, since we have both, right? No. Okay. Oh, come on, come on. Help out. We need help. Um. <clears throat> Or that in the description of love, sir, in the description of love, the the description is uh, in some ways a little like Socrates in the sense that love is kind of rough looking and not really pretty. Ah, okay, you're picking up. Okay, because ah. of the quality, you know, of poverty. Okay, look here, similar to. And Socrates, we know, is not a very nice looking man. Okay, look, say, why don't we change this? One, two, three, right? Plenty. One, two, three, etc. And as I continue to think about this, almost everything in both poverty and Plenty's columns are things we know about Socrates that are not necessarily in the text. You know that he, you know, is not a handsome man. He's always sleeping in doorways or standing in some ways. You know because he doesn't wear you okay. know, shoes. So you're adding to the fact that this is not a unique occurrence, but something they know about Socrates. Yeah, everybody knows that. Okay. Not Agathon. Uh, pardon. Oh, I, he was saying everybody knows that about Socrates, but it, it doesn't appear that Agathon does. Cause, because Arist Aristodemus keeps saying, leave him alone. That's something he does all the time. And, and, but Agathon keeps saying, go get him, go get him, go get him. So I was just saying it, doesn't, it didn't, didn't look to me like Agathon had knowledge of Socrates. Do you mean to say he's ignorant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Depending upon how you understand the way he is using the word ignorant. Doesn't right. hit on Because it's very specific. It's different than anyone else's use of the word ignorant. And so too for right opinion and understanding. <clears throat> okay, see, you're doing some good work, right? And Barbara just raised an interesting question. That the way in which you see the characters functioning, you can attribute to them certain states of mind. It looks like, therefore, at this point, Agathon is ignorant. It appears to be the host appears to be ignorant. the host appears to be ignorant. In Ooh. fact, in fact, that's what's so weird. A uh, minor or an important aspect of what Socrateism does. An important aspect. Oh, oh. Mm. like key. Yeah. Okay, can you do the same thing with what else is in that paragraph? Then you're doing pretty good. Mm.
Well, Socrates plays with it, doesn't he? I mean, um, he says, I can... En- let me enjoy that wise thought. And Socrates says, wouldn't we be lucky if wisdom could flow from one of us to the other like okay. water flowing? Out of the full into the, the empty. Is it also key that Agathon is sitting in the lowest seat? Mm-hmm. Which reflects the mm-hmm. issue of ignorance? Yeah, that you can forget. Right, it's not important. <laughs> Well, except that if if it mm-hmm. if it were the two containers going one from to each post. other through that piece of wool, then it would always go from the higher to the lower. No. So no, that would mean no, Socrates sure. would be the wiser. No. And he does bring into the recognition. No. I just thought we'd stay in this one paragraph. Mm. <coughs> Well, he's not poverty because he wants Socrates to get a hold. He wants to get a hold of Socrates rather than him going to Socrates. Well, that's certainly true. So, what are you going to say about that? Though? Mm, well, that he's not. He's neither love nor. Aphrodite or plenty? Is there something lower than poverty? Okay. <laughs> Somebody who doesn't, who thinks they know when they don't, because he he wants Socrates to come to him. Okay. <clears throat> the question on the table, though, right, is what? The question of appearance and reality. That's right. I'm saying there's something important in that paragraph that shows the problem of appearance and reality in that dialogue. Mm. Hmm. Um, Could it be the implication that Agathon's popularity of being before 30,000 people, argumentum ad populum, where Socrates is saying, well, your brilliance was shown by, you know, all these people showing up and mine, you know, is just sort of, sort of questionable, dreaming state of, you know, no significance. And uh, that, to me, points out, you know, that when you're looking at that, usually, argumentum ad populum, you know, is worthless. It's like, so there's a billion, you know, um, people who believe something. Does that make it true? I hardly think so. Nor I. I'm on your side. Now, can you use that thought in that paragraph, and we'll wind it up? That Got the point that was just made? Mm-hmm. That the, this questionable poor stuff and dreams of Socrates may have more reality. No, no, no you left it. Yep. Stay, stay with the issue. Okay. The, the issue is that the large number of people who think something is true make it only a large number of people who think it's true it does not make it true. Then Agathon talks about the fact that we will come into court on our claim for wisdom and argue it. Dionysius is the judge. What is Dionysius known for? Right. Okay, let me put it this way, shall we? Just for a moment. Shall we accept as true 
the views and the opinions of the participants in the dialogue about themselves, about the others in the dialogue, and especially their views about sovereignty. First point, just themselves. Just themselves. Because See, what, what they speak in each of their each of their dialogues is only what they know about themselves. That may not even be true. That's not true. <clears throat> it's true of them. It's true of themselves. But it's not true in a statement as it appears for... They may, for but they may not even make true statements about their own views. Their, their, their own views may not be true. This is true. Yes. No, no, no. And their views about themselves may not turn out may to have, be true either. Yes. may have a lot of untruth. Right. Yeah, yeah. By the way, in this paragraph, do we have anything that we can fit into one of these categories? Sure. Agathon yeah. thinks he... Agathon thinks that Socrates has a wise thought yeah. and mm -hmm. because he was standing outside in the porch yeah. and um, <clears throat> that he so he, he because of that he wants to in, he wants to get him to come by it so it's a thought about Socrates that he's had a, an insider or okay. his cogitation now what can you do with that comment come on that Agathon no, judges what he went about it Judges by opinion. Then Agathon thinks that he can become like Socrates. Wise, wise if he wise. discovers the, the wise thought. thought that Socrates has. The, the wise the thoughts porch. that Socrates was having on the doorway. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Oh, if he touches him, if he can get, get a hold, hold of him. him. Yeah. To enjoy that wise yeah. thought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but the custom. To lie yeah. With so what is his view of what of That he's having a what? An insight. An insight. Yeah, insight. Some sort of a wise thought. thought. A wise thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does they do they use the word fit in the in, in the in the Thomas guide? Does know. anybody know? I did. That he had a fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A fit of thinking. Yeah, okay. And he thinks that if he shares in that wise thought, wise thought wise he thought. himself will become wise. wise. Mm -hmm. wise. By the way, does that fit Socrates' idea of what wisdom is? No. 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 In the dialogue, remember I said right. you have to be very precise about the way you use these four terms. No. Okay. Because what if? Okay. Mm. What if he is not pursuing a wise thought? Then what shall we say about Agathon? That he doesn't know how to judge it. That he, that he judges by appearances, that he doesn't know how to judge Socrates, that oh. he doesn't know how to judge wisdom would also ah. follow, him, or how to get it. Ah. So in other words, people are having a little problem about the guy they know very well and what he is. Is that right? That's right. Ah. They're making assumptions. Ah. Plus he wants to enjoy the wise thought. Like it's at, it's not at the level of understand, no, but just no. enjoy it. If no. I grab hold of you, I'll enjoy it. That helps. It. It. That yeah. helps. That helps, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He doesn't ask him to sit down and tell us, share with share with us what it is you've grasped in your wise thought. Mm -hmm. Right? They enjoy it. You want to try? Yeah. Okay. Now we have a few minutes before we start working, so. <laughs> Get a cup of coffee or something before we go to work. Oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll do it. Well, in a sense, yeah. But also in this.
one page to fall down the book is small. It's perfect. Take it out. Take it out. I like this curious question, sometimes called Socratic irony. So, how about reading the next paragraph for us? Sure. That starts it. Socrates sat down. That's the one. Socrates sat down and said, what a blessing it would be, Agathon, if wisdom could run from the fuller amongst us to the emptier while we touch one another. And when two cups are placed side by side, a bit of wool conveys water from the fuller to the emptier. If wisdom is like that, I think it precious to be beside you, for I think I shall be filled up with fine wisdom. Mine would be poor stuff and questionable like a dream, but yours brilliant and fast growing. See how it has blazed out of you while you are still young and showed itself to us the other day before over 30,000 of our nation. Okay, that's it. <laughs> what do you think of what's going on? I think nowadays they call that being a smart ass. <laughs> because come on. Yeah. Good. Well, sure. Sarcasm. And he, well, he takes an idea that's apparently absurd and presents it about his part about his friend as if it were as if it were true. So it's another appearance versus reality kind of game. Okay. Smart ass is another way of talking about it. He's being ironic. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? You would then agree this is an example of Socrates' irony, whatever that means. Is that right? No, I won't agree with that. Come on, they need help. So Look, sort of reinforcements have just arrived. Woo. Yes. Woo I, it, All right. Isn't he, isn't he functioning similar to how Diatima functions, functions with him later in the dialogue? Uh, I think he's functioning in a similar way. You know, he's, he's uh, so to speak, slapping him. And uh, Diatima seems to be functioning in a similar manner later in the dialogue. Say, so do you remember that table we set up here a few minutes ago? And uh, I then added something. Let me just put it back up. Uh, can we accept as true, <coughs> everything that Socrates says. <coughs> no way. Why not? I do. <laughs> I do too. I guess I'm wrong. Why not? It's not. I know, no. I just. Can we? Can we? Sure. <laughs> no. If so, apply it to this paragraph. Mm, okay. Well, you know, I mean, Socrates is just pointing out that Agathon is treating wisdom like a physical entity, like water. Like if you want to siphon off water or gasoline from a gas tank, it goes from the higher to the lower. But he's so he's saying, what a blessing it would be if wisdom were like water, if it were subject to gravity and all the other things that water is. 
Um, so he's just pointing out what's the case. <coughs> it's not ironic. He's then you'd say this is an example of him saying something that's true. Then he's not being ironic. No. But what is he doing? It's not ironic. It is curious, is it not? What is it? How would you describe what he's doing? <coughs> Well, he's being sarcastic to the boy, telling him it's not that easy. We have to, you need to work for this. It just doesn't flow from here to there. You need to put the energy behind it. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Come on. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> I would see sarcasm. Or, yeah, he's sarcastic I, with building him up. Sarcastic. Know? I don't like how it has blazed out of you while you were still young and showed itself to us the, the other day. The dude is sarcastic, right? Yeah. Because... Yeah. Because he's giving... Um, because if you did it, or if someone did it to you, you'd call it sarcastic. Yeah. Right? No. <clears throat> but what is it that he is doing? Whatever word you're going to use to describe it must follow from an analysis of what it is he is doing. He's deflecting praise. He's deflecting praise or diffusing praise. Okay, I'll go along with anything you say. No, because I'm called the other year. So I'll go along. Well, I think it's a good... You've often brought up the idea of looking for function. Like how is... Like when we're looking for what is somebody doing, we're looking at how they're functioning. Where to go with that is not really clear to me. But I think it's... I think it's an after direction. We want to look at how he's functioning in relation to... Okay. That. What is he doing? Is the question. Yeah. Right. I'll take that as a good paraphrase. Modeling. He's giving a model for wisdom. Okay. And and indicating that that wisdom could be communicated through tragedy too. Okay. And it should blaze out of you. Pierre, can we can we take really a moment and to look? at who Dionysius and Bacchus are as the judge of this particular irony, sarcastic, because I don't think, to me, since Plato isn't a careless writer, he might be. Mm. The, the person who is going to judge this is going to be that god. What do we know about that god, Dionysius or Bacchus? Well, this is what we're going to find out. Look here. Would you go along with this just as a beginning? Here you have a beautiful picture. Of, and you'll tell me later why he has to say that he's young. All right? So we'll skip that. All right? But would you agree he said something? Mm hmm Good. By the way, the Socrates then... Look at that, and then That's right. express what he sees about that. Hmm. What's the relationship between these two? Hmm. Yeah, so that makes me want to argue with the position I took earlier. <laughs> Let's do it, okay? He's Let's saying, do it again. Let's read it, okay? Come on. Uh, I'll read it. Oh, it's fair to me. Oh. Fair, fair, fair. Oh, okay. I thought you were what a, the whole, both paragraphs or just the well, you need we, okay. we need both. <clears throat> After this, he said they fell too, but no Socrates appeared. Agathon kept on giving orders to send for him, but my friend would not let him. However, he did come after not so long delay as usual, and found them about the middle of dinner. Then Agathon, who was reclining on the lowest seat alone on the right side said, this way, Socrates, come by me. I want you, I want to get a hold of you to enjoy that wise thought which came to you in the porch. For it is clear you found it and have it still, or you would never have come away. Socrates, step down. down so. You got the comment? Yeah. I Dr. wish Cummins? to get a hold of you to enjoy that wise thought. And etc. Agree? Right. Okay. 
if you agree that Socrates is going to look at that, and now he's doing something with that. Can you tell me now, in the next paragraph? What a blessing it would be, Agathon, if wisdom could run from the fuller amongst us to okay. the emptier. Well, how much is that? What's he doing? He's taking what he is saying, and what is he doing? He's pushing the implications of that in terms of the issue of wisdom. Agree? Hey, if wisdom were like that. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, Go ahead. Yes. <clears throat> but he turns it into a hypothetical, right? Like, yes, he is. Mm -hmm. It is hypothetical. Go ahead. What a blessing it would be, Agathon, if wisdom could run from the fuller amongst us to the emptier while we touch one another as when two cups are placed side by Thank side. You. <coughs> so he picks up this, doesn't he? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. As when... And this, right? He mm -hmm. picks up, right? He's using everything that's being said, and we want to know later what name to put on it. Go ahead. As, one, as when two cups are placed side by side, a bit of wool conveys water from the fuller to the emptier. If wisdom is like that, I think it precious to be beside you. Therefore, what is he calling him? Wise. If wisdom is like that. If wisdom is like that, how is he characterizing Agathon? Wise. The fuller. Precious. The knower. No. As a knower, or as... <clears throat> no? Read it again. Oh. Empty. Yeah. Well, he's <laughs> empty. Therefore, yeah, right. What? Empty. Well, Youthful, I mean, green, young, and inexperienced. Doesn't you're matter. a kid. Yeah, you're just yeah. a kid. What do you yeah, know? You're young. Yeah. And you're empty. Yeah. Empty of what? Empty of wisdom. wisdom. Yeah, therefore it might be its definition of what? <laughs> Ignorance. Ignorance. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Go ahead. If wisdom is like that, I think it precious to be beside you, for I think I shall be filled up with fine wisdom. It's backwards, though. Mine would right. be... Right, hey, if that's true, mm. then where, where am I? <laughs> Go ahead. Now he's contrasting it. Come on, go ahead. Mine would be poor stuff and questionable, like a dream. But yours brilliant and fast growing. See how it was has blazed out of you while you were still young and showed itself to us the other day before over thirty thousand of our nation. Okay. All right. What's the latter part doing? Come on, what's he doing? Come on. Latter part, he's then reflecting upon his speech. Yeah. Agathon and the fact that he just gave a speech. A speech. Or and therefore he was. would be fuller of wisdom than oh. Socrates. Oh. If. Oh. By the way, but this is essential to one understand the dialogue. <coughs> if you don't get the significance of this, you'll lose a good deal of the whole dialogue. <coughs> In what way? But isn't he implying that what Agathon's play was doing to those 30,000 people was giving them wisdom? And that, you know, those people were affected in some way by Agathon? Okay. If he was giving them wisdom, what do you think of his assertion that he's giving to Socrates? Well, but that's what Socrates just pointed out. I wish it was that way. Yeah, he wish it was. Therefore, therefore, it's it not. didn't happen. Yeah. Mm. That Agathon okay. really didn't do anything. Mm. Appearance and reality again. How does it appear that he's uh, praising, <laughs> would you say, Agathon? Yeah, it appears that way. Yeah, it, appears that way. Mm. it seems that way. Here's yeah. the word appear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Appears that way. Well, it appears he has wisdom because look at the crowd that applauded him. Appears. Appears. By the way, would it be important to know whether or not Socrates attended 
that reading or that play or that drama or that speech? You know? Yeah. He wasn't. He uh, did, wasn't yeah. shown, yeah. What's show the significance, it. therefore, of this later? Hmm. All right, see how we're, all right, now let's sure. go back. All right? Can I, can I ask a quick question about, about um, the metaphor that's being used here? The wool? Yeah. Um, it seems to me it's not um, <coughs> exactly the same thing. Or at least in one of its, it's a little different. If the wool is between two cups of water, then when the water leaves, like wisdom would be shared. Mm -hmm. I give it to you, then we both have it. Mm -hmm. But with the water metaphor, the water would leave one cup and go to the empty. other cup, and therefore it would empty the earlier. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's so right. So then, if he's so, if the metaphor does match accurately, then he's implying that in giving his wisdom to thirty thousand people, he no longer has any. Yeah, that'll follow. Mm -hmm. If wisdom were like that, it, it left him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay, see, we're now taking his metaphors and we're taking them seriously and we're pushing the implications of it. That's what we're doing. That's right. Hey, by the way, um, let's go back once more into that. Mm. Next line, okay, next paragraph, just a short one. Now look here. Agathon, number one, knows what he says. He now hears, and now, that's an exchange. Okay, next, please. Well, you are a scoffer, Socrates. Well, we will come into court before long about this, you and I, on our claim for wisdom, and the judge shall be Dionysius. Now first, turn to dinner. Okay. There you go. What would you say? Is he following? He definitely got the drift. <laughs> yeah. And I think he's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> then he knows what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Ah, he got two women. Then he, this got through to him. Okay. It did. Yeah. And it got him upset. Is that right? Yeah. And we'd like to know whether true. translations on the words scoffer. Should we not? Scoffer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's because it says insolent. In the, in the lamb, it's a rude mocker. What does it say there? A joker. rude mocker. And in Thomas Taylor, it's joker. joker. Insolent. No, it's a mocker. Yeah. Mocker. Come on, put them all together. Joker, scoffer. Insolent. An insolent son of a bitch. Right. <laughs> so now, tell me now, uh, can you now make a statement about this first dialogue in the play, in the dialogue? One, two, three. Yeah, yeah we can skip it. Remember, we started out wondering about this question called irony. Is it irony, or what is Socrates doing? Well, mocking. Here, the uh, it would have been it's hubristic, so it, I mean it should be you are a hubristic, you are arrogant, Socrates, rather than a mocker. Mm. 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 But still, whatever you say, no, 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 this is a great whatever point. you say, those words, whatever you're going to use, should be able to be used to describe the interaction of these two men in three steps. Sorry, I was just... Uh, is, is he mocking him, would you say? No, that's so Agathon's appearance. That's his statement. Did In this short little dialogue, did uh, Agathon learn anything? Yes. Did he come to see something? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. What? He got he got Socrates jabbed at the fact that he was so big and wonderful yesterday, but today he's just Agathon and playing... Uh, the, the weaker role. And so Socrates is going, no, no, that's not the way it is. Look at you yesterday. It is I who will learn from you. And mm -hmm. saying, huh. <laughs> yeah, that's come back to me. So I, I have a, and he got it. He says, no. yeah, I got you. No. Now, what name we shall we use to describe this? Would this word any longer fit? 
in, in a way it does because but of the I'll fact take, that it is right. But in a way, but then we need to add to it if we're still going to use the word irony. Well, mm. He's saying he sees him better than he sees himself. Okay. I'll leave that to you guys. Mm. Okay. All right. Now we're going to get the conditions for the dialogue. So, next paragraph. After this, Socrates replied, and he and they all had their dinner. They poured the drops of grace and sang a chant to the god and did the usual things and settled down to drinking. Then Pausanias began the talk like this. Look here, gentlemen. How shall we manage our drinking most conveniently? I tell you, I am really not up to the mark myself after yesterday's crowd, and I want some rest. And so do most of you, I think, for you were present yesterday. Just consider, then, how we could manage our drinking most conveniently. Number one. Okay, next paragraph. Another reader, different reader. Oh, then the Aristophanes said, <clears throat> Now that is good advice, Pausanias, to make the drinking as comfortable as we can. I am one of those myself who had a good soaking yesterday. Quite right, you two. And one thing more I want to know, how, Ag how Agathon feels about being fit to drink. <coughs> no, I don't feel very fit myself either. It seems it would be a bit of luck for us, me and Aristodemus and Phaedrus and our friends here, if you with the strongest heads for drinking have thrown up the sponge, for we are always the weaklings. I do not count Socrates. He can do both always, and it will content him whichever we choose. Then since it seems no one present votes for a hearty bout of deep wine drinking, perhaps I should not give offense if I tell you the truth about the effect of getting drunk. I think I have seen quite clearly as a physician that drunkenness is a dangerous thing for mankind. I am not willing to go far in drinking myself, nor would I advise another to drink, especially if he still has a headache from yesterday. Phaedrus the Miranusian responded, Well, I always take your advice, especially on matters of physic and health, and the rest of us will be wise to do the same now. So all agreed after hearing this not to drink too much during the present party, but everyone should drink just to please himself. Good. They finally got a principle. <laughs> right? They're great. They all got a principle. And would you agree there's a continual reference to the night before? Yeah. Right? Right? It's continual. Right? Good. 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 And they're uh, poured the drops of grace and sang a chant to the god, which we assume was Dionysius. Okay, so we now have everyone should do what? Be moderate, because all they're going to do, each do is just drink as much as they please. <laughs> <laughs> to please themselves. moderation. Right, that's a great principle, isn't it? Yeah. Depends right, on how many yeah. drunkards are. Can we do that anyway? <laughs> <laughs> that's what got them in trouble the last that's night. Last night. <laughs> yeah. That's why they all had headaches. Shall we conclude they may have learned something or didn't learn something about yesterday? Mm. Yeah. It's absurd. Oh, and some worse than others? Yeah. Okay, all right. Now we have a long paragraph. <clears throat> I all agreed and gave right. leave. So the women are out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just the men sitting around, <coughs> right, talking about a certain subject. Sorry, Right. Lying They're around. all there to talk. Good. And drink as much as he likes. <coughs> <coughs> and drink as much as he likes. As they please. As sure. they, I think yes, that's important they, because yeah. that's a restraining... Right. Might be, could be, or maybe. Okay, <laughs> jump in. They all this agreed and gave me another reader. And told him to propose a way. So, are they getting rid of the Salinas figure in this one? Is it the piping girl? They're getting not, rid of what? Well, isn't there reference in about Socrates 
and the Selene Marcius figure is a pipe. Oh, I don't remember. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, that is a, that, no. Before we go, that is an odd little. That is an odd little bit, and I and I and I don't want to. I don't want to just cast it off. What I, I, I haven't. I've never really looked at this with any intent. But the <coughs> this notion of the piping girl coming in and going out again and playing to herself or to women inside. I, no women. Yeah. But if they're going to do their own piping. They're going to need a piping clamp. Talking, right? Okay, look here. Ready for the big paragraph? <coughs> okay. All right, All right. Well, Jeff, Jeff, what do you say? Sure. Starting from I will begin? Yeah, wherever you want. Well, I will begin? <laughs> no, whatever you please. <laughs> Which Jeff? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Go ahead. Sure. Go, oh, Jeff. I will begin by quoting from the Melipe of Euripides. The story is not mine, which I am going to tell. It belongs to Phaedrus, for Phaedrus is always complaining to me. It's a shame, Eurysimachus, that many other gods have hymns and pains, pains made for them by the poets. But love, that ancient mighty god, has not a single one. Of all the thousands of poets who have lived, not one has ever made even an ode to praise him. Or look at the worthy professors, if you please. They compose praises of men like Pericles in the prose, as an excellent Prodicus did. Perhaps that is not so surprising, but lately I came across a book by some wise man where salt was lauded to the skies for its usefulness. And you could find many other such things praised of. Just think, to find such a fuss about things like salt, when no human being has ever dared to this day to him love worthily. What neglect for such a great god. I think Phaedrus is quite right there. So I wish to make my small contribution and offer it to him. And at the same time, it seems to be proper on this occasion for us to now presently live to glorify the god. If you vote with me, we should find plenty to amuse us in the speeches. For my proposal is that we should deliver a full dress oration in, in praise of love, each one from left to right. And Phaedrus must begin first, since he is in the first place, and he is also father of the speech. And Socrates said, uh, okay, what do you say? What is the complaint? Right, there's a complaint. Yeah. <clears throat> that, nobody's, that nobody has, uh, they don't write hymns about the God of love. More. Good. More. That there's, been, there's been praise on anything else, even salt, and yet the God of love is just cast aside. He's not even noted. So let's bring, let's bring something to the table. By the way, is there um, anything that the authors of this speech, Eryximachus, urges why there should be a talk about love? Or is it just because no one has made a speech or a poem or an ode to love? Is it just because of the absence? Is there anything else? The great God. Like, the, you know, like, I, I, if I was there, I would have said, <clears throat> that's a grand idea. And for the same reason, I think no one has ever in my presence, or has anyone ever told me about anyone praising a belly button. And therefore, each person should get up and recite a great praise for belly buttons. Hmm. All right. <coughs> In this case, though, he's saying uh, that it seems to him proper on this occasion for us now to present, to glorify, to the God. So he's saying that it's appropriate to the particular occasion. Yeah, okay. That's why I would use my example. I think everyone brought a belly button with them. It's appropriate to the occasion, since no one has ever sung praises to belly buttons, that therefore they would have a belly button praise contest. Yeah. You know, 
good idea. And when you can see how many people today, especially women, you know, are putting all kinds of <coughs> uh, <laughs> buttons, bells, whistles on, uh, <laughs> hanging from their belly button, that it must be very significant today. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. right. Yeah. I'll give a speech on it. <laughs> belly buttons? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I would take the one that was just offered and add that we'll find plenty, we should find plenty to amuse us. Okay, it's all going to be a, it's for humor, is that right? But the belly okay. button is okay. not a god. Or is it? <laughs> so those are the only two I could find. Uh, you don't seem to like those, Pierre. Um, what do you see? Nothing. I just thought I'd raise the issue. I gave you my opinion and you scoffed at it. <laughs> you hubris guy. You hubris guys. <laughs> you don't think we can classify that as irony? <laughs> so, uh, does, does he single out something that he, he uh, finds curious about what men do praise? Salt. Usefulness. Yeah. Salt. <clears throat> yeah. He mentions salt. Uh, what does he say about salt? That it has eloquent praises brought about to it. And yet, not one single one to love. Okay. <laughs> A wise man wrote about it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Here's something you missed. Let me go back. In, in Taylor, he talks about that sure. so much pain should be bestowed upon subjects so mean, and yet that no man should ever to this day have undertaken to give love his due praises. That's, that's Taylor. If someone praises something worthily, all right, what is the standard that this person is citing as evidence of something worthwhile about something, which is why it's justified to sing praises to it? That's all. Thought I'd ask that. Is it useful? It's good. He mentioned that there's such good. Something. Huh? It's something good. Salt is something good. Is Oh, did you read but the it's praise says it's good? Hmm? He's praising it. Does he say it's good? No. He says it's then don't useful. give me something that's not in the text. Why? Is there something better in the text than what you can come up with? That's the only reason, by the way. Go ahead. Want to read your quote again, please? But lately, right, but lately, I came across in my reading, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I have a different translation. That's okay, take, I'll take you. <clears throat> well, what he's saying is that it, it's, such a, it's such a large interest in love, and it's amazing that nothing has ever been said about it. Yeah, I mean, this yeah. is what this is saying I just here. wondered about the salt. Oh, the salt. You were making, I said you missed yeah, it. Yeah, I missed it by half, all right. <laughs> I have met with a philosophical work in which the utility of salt has been made the theme of an eloquent discourse, and many other like things have had like honor bestowed upon them, and only to think that there should been an, there should have been an eager interest created about them, and yet that to this day, as Phaedrus well and truly says, no one has ever dared worthy to him love's praises. Mm -hmm. okay. well. But lately, I came across a book. Got that? No, I don't have that one yet. Yes. <coughs> By some wise man. That's the one about where salt is praised. Sandy. Barbara? Okay. Oh, See, this, this translation is, is, is weak. Uh, perhaps. Go for it. Perhaps that is not so surprising, but lately I came across a book by some wise man where salt was lauded to the skies for its usefulness. Thank you. And you could find What's many other hey. such things. What are these? Come on. He praised them for usefulness. Because it's usefulness. Yeah. Oh. Well, I thought I said that. Okay. 
Yeah. Wait a minute. Let's do that one again. Let's see. He picks on something which he thinks is on the lowest level of all things to praise. Mm -hmm. But he finds it's praiseworthy because he can cite its usefulness, usefulness. usefulness. Ah. beneficial properties. Therefore, is it possible we might look for that theme in the speeches about love? Or shall we just look for something amusing? Right? We have two things competing now, don't we? Right? It's going to be just a lot of fun. <coughs> Find behind it, but he's useful. Right. Uh, just, a he point, just a Greek point. Pardon um, me. Just a Greek point. It's the word ophelion, which is probably better translated as advantage or benefit. Yeah, benefit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, quick question. Sean. Um, is it? I'm, I'm okay. I'm having problems seeing that Eryximachus. Um, uh, holds this value uh, about salt. I, I only see him in the text, I only see him recollecting coming across a book by somebody in which whoever wrote the book found salt praiseworthy or superbly lauded for its usefulness. So whoever wrote the book yeah. about salt, found, that was the... That's true criterion for that author, but That's I don't see Eryximachus uh, agreeing with that. Uh, so I'm missing something. Oh no, he's citing it. Okay. That's right. That's right. So it's a and, form of irony? Right. And Again. You know, along those same lines, this whole issue of, um, of um, love not being praised enough was Phaedrus's position. He's right. just representing right. Phaedrus's he's position. He's presenting mm -hmm. Phaedrus's position. Right. Which... Yeah. Right. Therefore, will you pick up the next paragraph and read for it? Okay. Then Socrates said, No one will vote against you, Eryximachus. I could not refuse myself, I suppose, when love is the only thing I profess to know about. Bang. Oh. Go ahead. Nor will Agathon, I suppose, and Pausanias, nor indeed Aristophanes, who devotes all his time to Dionysus and Aphrodite, nor any other of those I see here. However, it is not quite fair on us who are last. But if those before us give us some really good speeches, that will do for us. Then let Phaedros be the first and speak in praise of love and good luck to him. All the others agreed and asked him to do as Socrates suggested. However, what each one of them all said, Aristodemos could not remember, nor can I remember all he told me. But what I do remember and what I thought most worth remembering, I will tell you of each of the speeches. Ah, uh, so? It wasn't very memorable, or it couldn't didn't make sense or something. That's right. Uh -huh. right. Okay. Moving from left to right, therefore, if Socrates speaks, what do we know? He's last. I know. Oh. What does it mean? That everyone before him was not sufficient in their oration right. of love. Fine. Mm -hmm. right. 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 Because if anyone gave a really worthy speech, that would do for him, that we could talk about something else. Therefore, yeah. if he does speak, right. it's an implicit criticism of all the preceding speeches. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, should we find in this speech some counter-argument to any of their speeches and their views of love? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. ah. 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 Yeah. As we well, I thought if we had enough time, we'd just read the first speech. <laughs> because, you know, it's getting late. We well, don't want to go over words. No, a lot of people object to us going over time. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right? Sean does. Always. Pa once in a while. <laughs> I'll read it. Okay. Before we start reading, I, well, just, the, yeah, I, I just wanted to bring up, you had brought up uh, the idea of appearance and reality, and it looked like there was something you were seeing about appearance and reality and how that can be important in 
Oh to yeah. Us in terms of understanding this, yeah, the rest of the dialogue. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing it quite yet. I mean, oh, I see good. some of the glad to hear. But I'd like to I'd like to know what it is about appearance and reality that you find useful in terms of understanding these. If you might elucidate a little bit. There's no understanding unless you see the difference. Okay. The particular appearance and reality. Okay. The whole book, that's the book, and it takes on a lot of fun levels. That's one issue. Okay. So we had a reader, do we not, on the first speech? Hold it, Lyndon. Uh, wouldn't the issue of the loved and beloved be an appearance and a reality that would be uh, the most apparent to discern and most difficult? Sure. I'll accept Okay, ready for the first speech? Okay, look. What are the elements included in each speech? How can they be judged? And compared speech by speech. See? So we should be able to have each of their speeches. We should be able to see the elements in them and see whether the same or different elements are included. Then make a comparison between them, should we not? We want to see whether there's any development. We want to see whether each one is uh, internally consistent and harmonious to part to whole and all of those other nice things. Ready? <coughs> we need a reader. Who did we get? Right here. Right out. Well, as I say, Phaedrus, According to Aristodemus, was the first, and he began hereabouts, that love was a great God and wonderful on earth and in heaven, especially in his birth. The God is honorable as being among the most ancient of all, he said, and a proof is that parents love has none, nor are they mentioned by anyone, poet or not, although Hesiod does say that chaos came first. And then broad-breasted earth, the everlasting seat of all, and love. Acusileus also agreed with Hesiod. He says that after chaos will produce these two, earth and love. But Parmenides says of birth that she contrived love, contrived love, the first of all the gods. Thus many agree that love is most ancient among them. And being most ancient, he is cause of the greatest good for us. For I cannot say what is a greater good for a man in his youth than a lover, and for a lover than a beloved. For that which ought to guide mankind through all his life, if it is to be a good life, noble blood cannot implant in him so well, nor office, nor wealth, nor anything but love. And what do I mean by that? I mean shame at ugly things, and ambition in beautiful things. For without these, neither city nor man can accomplish great and beautiful works. 
I say then of a man who loves that if he should be detected in doing something ugly or allowing himself to be treated in ugly fashion because through cowardice he did not defend himself, he would suffer less pain to be seen by father or friends or anyone else than by his beloved. In the same way we see that the beloved is particularly ashamed before the lover when seen in any ugly situation. Then if any device could be found, how a state or an army could be made up only of lovers and beloved, they could not possibly find a better way of living, since they would abstain from all ugly things and be ambitious and beautiful things towards each other. And in battle side by side, such troops, although few, would conquer pretty well all the world, for the lover would be less willing to be seen by his beloved than by all the rest of the world, leaving the ranks or throwing away his arms, and he would choose to die many times rather than that. Yes, and as to deserting the beloved or not helping in danger, no one is so base that love himself would not inspire him to valor and make him equal to the born hero. And just as Homer says that the god breathes fury into some of the heroes, so does love really give to lovers a power coming from himself. And to die for another, this only lovers are willing to do, not only men, but women. Alcestis, Peleus' daughter, gives sufficient evidence of this to prove it to our nation. She alone was willing to die for her husband, although he had a father and a mother. These the wife so much surpassed in love because of her affection for her husband that she showed they were aliens to their own son and were relatives only in name. Having done this, she was thought not only by men, but by gods also, to have done so nobly. Done so nobly that they sent up her soul from the dead in admiration for her deed. Although of all the many who have done noble deeds, one might easily count those to whom the gods gave the privilege of having their souls sent up again from Hades. Thus the gods also honor especially earnestness and valor in love. But Orpheus, Oeagrus' son, they sent back unsuccessful from Hades, showing him a fant phantom of his wife for whom he came, but not giving her real self because they thought him soft, being a zither player, and they thought he did not dare to die for his love like Alcestis, but managed to get into Hades alive. For this reason, therefore, they punished him and made his death come about by women, unlike Achilles, the son of Thetis. But they honored Achilles and sent him to the islands of the blessed, because when his mother told him that if he killed Hector, he would die, but if he did not kill him, he would return home and live to be an old man. He dared to choose by helping his lover Patroclus and avenging him, not only to die for him, but in his end to perish over his body. Hence, therefore, the gods, admiring him above measure, honored him particularly, because he set so high the value of his lover. But Aeschylus is absurd when he says Achilles was the lover of Patroclus the Beloved, when he was more beautiful not only than Patroclus, but than all the heroes, and was yet beardless, and again much younger, as Homer says. But in fact, the gods do most greatly honor this valor for love's sake. Yet they still more respect and admire and reward when the beloved feels affection for the lover than when the lover does for his beloved. For a lover is more divine than the beloved, since he is inspired. Therefore they honored Achilles more than Alcestis and sent him to the islands of the blessed. Thus then I say that of the gods, love is at once oldest and most precious, and has most power to provide virtue and happiness for mankind both living and dead. Such or something well, like... Not on that shit. That's it. Okay. What are we going to do with it? Hmm. Should we just Warren. throw it open and forget this for a while? <clears throat> okay, what do you think of it? Or to this one of the other? Oldest of the gods. He mentions he's the oldest of this love is one of the older gods. He's one of the elders. That's a theology. Yes. Well, it is um, a theology. Or mythology. Mythology. He has no parents. So what? Instills virtue. Most so what? Most powerful. Huh? Most, okay. most powerful to provide virtue. 
Pardon me? What's the, pardon me, what's the point you want to make? Is that the end? Oh, my point? Yeah. Oh, just that it says such or something like it was the speech of Phaedrus. No, 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 that's later. Well, my point is that it was, you know, it's a little No, no, um, stay in the speech only. Stay in the speech only. Yeah. Okay. So we'll use that point later, but not now. Mm -hmm. okay. So lover and beloved elements? Yeah, what about this? Yeah, okay. Well, Virtue. There's a whole bunch of things he says. Though. Willing to die. Yeah. For I, I just thought you were asking he for elements. He instills virtue into the... Oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> into the being. There are four things. There are four things that are right. central to the star of love. <clears throat> What's he contrasting in this speech? Lover, Lover and beloved, right? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go ahead, do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the lover's more divine. Mm -hmm. Inspired. More virtuous. Yeah, you got the sacrificial that was mentioned as a great sacrifice of the of the wife. So there was a sacrifice that uh, the gods deemed more honorable. So there, there's to die for some another. Mm -hmm. What? To die for another. <coughs> for the lover. Okay. It's the best thing. Pardon? It's the best thing for a, for a young, well, he says for a youth. Okay. But the best thing is to be a lover. And the best yeah. thing for a lover is the best lover. Yeah, okay. So. Okay. Well, we need another uh, comparative division of columns uh, for the, the lover's relation with the beloved versus yeah, the lo yeah. lover's okay. relation okay. with everybody yeah. else. Go ahead, do it. Well, he feels more, more shame to do shameful things in front of the beloved than he feels in front of others. I agree with all of this. So we can skip it. <laughs> Why? Okay. Why? We go to the next speech. Appearance and reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can also have one here for uh, love, can you not? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, of course. Right, just to line yeah. them all up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The yeah. It occurs to me that his association of all these high moral virtues yeah. is that, more, more, more associated. Yes, that's true. Go ahead. It, it is more associated with the idea of ego than love. No. Okay. See, that's yeah. making a judgment from the outside. That's okay. But this isn't reading. Unless you can tell me the evidence he cites for each of these things. Okay, Give me some statements about love. Would you do that first? Okay. Cause of the greatest good for us. Okay, got him? Look here, I'll write that down. He was a great God. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> in on earth and in heaven. Yeah, okay, and on earth too. <laughs> 
Especially in his birth. Okay, good. He was born. So he died. So long as you list, list them nicely, you're still getting an F. An F. <laughs> <laughs> no A for effort. <laughs> Look here. Any of you guys, are ladies, are, the, are you good at uh, a little bit of art? Who's, who can sketch for me? Because you don't want me to do it, do you? Yeah, you do. She's great. <laughs> who is you, who's good? Bradley. Okay. Bradley? Yeah. Bradley's an artist. <laughs> yeah, Bradley's okay, an look here. Look here. Look here. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. I'll try it since you guys are reluctant. You'll have to live with it. Uh, okay, let's get someone to read that again. Um, just, how about just <coughs> ten lines or so? Okay. Okay, let's do it over. Well, he began hereabouts. That love was a great God. Number one. Okay. Go ahead. And wonderful on earth and in heaven. But wonderful on earth and in heaven. Is that right? Now we're going to see that. <coughs> right? It's got to be in both. Buster Dunn. Go ahead. Especially in his birth. And especially in his birth. Right? Mm -hmm. By the way, wouldn't you agree you'd love to see someone uh, going through a birth process, especially if they didn't have any parents? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Wouldn't you, Kate? Yeah, it couldn't be. What? Uh, it couldn't be, could it? What do you mean it couldn't be? It's in the book. It's in the book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is that is strange. What's what are you laughing at? Well, oh, it's just it's like it's like the Virgin Mary. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, let's, let's read it. Yeah, I'll, I'll shut up for a few minutes. Do it over again. Love is a great God. And Number one, great on God. Earth and in heaven. And especially at his birth, because obviously he had no parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be a hell of a birth, wouldn't it, without yeah. parents? Yeah, okay, okay. Well, it certainly give Parmenides a headache. Yeah, go ahead. The yeah, God, in a curious way. Keep going. The God <laughs> is honorable as being among the most ancient of all. Uh, most ancient means? Oldest. 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 Right? So love is an old, old God. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's why he's the old. oldest of all of them. Right. That's what he says. Except for the ones that's that's what not old. saying. Go ahead. Yeah. And a proof is that parents' love has none. Yeah, that's proof. Yeah. Hey, you know the proof that God is the oldest? He has no parents. No, <laughs> oh, that makes sense. D -d 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 does it? How about? <laughs> no, I, I feel like love, if love doesn't have parents, and they're referring to love as the If he oldest. never had parents, how long has he been living? Yeah. It's got to come right out of Zeus. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, keep going. I'll Here's ignore that before. one minor point. <laughs> Go ahead. Nor are they mentioned by anyone, poet or not. Hey, <laughs> would they be mentioned by anyone if they did? If you didn't have any? No. Right, they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Irony. Mm -hmm. Or something. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Poet or not, although Hesiod does say that chaos came first. Uh, what does that do? Ooh, what does that do to the people? Love is older. Love is born from chaos. Therefore, chaos is older than what? Love. 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 What does that do to the so far? Love is older. I guess he's going to argue that. Okay, keep going. 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 And then oh, Bob did conflicting big boobs uh, earth. All the just for a moment because uh, <coughs> big boobs earth. That's an add up. <laughs> I have a different Earth and love came together. Oh. <laughs> See, there they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'd appreciate it if you don't laugh at art. Okay. God. It's very yeah, yeah, read it, Dad. Yeah, because he's seated, you know, oh. broad breasted. Okay. And then large titted. Broad, broad breasted. <laughs> Sorry. Well, oh, and what, what's, what's he doing with broad, broad breast? What? What? Some broad breast, the earth, the everlasting seat of all. It's the everlasting seat. So all things are where? 
God rest his soul. Sitting on. Oh, Doing a bare chest. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that what he's saying? Come on. Is that what he's saying? Yes. Yeah. Thank Sounds you. That way to me. A big it's a very serious speech. There's nothing yeah. in here you can laugh about. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Just we should moment. find plenty, amuse. To amuse plenty to amuse us. Yeah. You better. Well, love is hanging out here. Now, hmm. I suspect if you keep the spirit alive, you'll begin to read that speech. Mm -hmm. See, it'd be fun to get someone to act it out, you know, someone who could really act out, talk it, you know. And, and smile and joke about it, you know, and try to bring it alive. But reading it's difficult to see humorism. Mm -hmm. But it's there. Isn't there some phrase about spending the evening entertaining each other? Pardon me, I didn't get that. Isn't there a phrase earlier about entertaining each other? Spending a pleasant Yes, yes, you should entertain one another. And enjoyment. Is that what's going on? Sounds like it to me. Okay, look here. Mm -hmm. Now, everything you said is there. That's all there. But you're missing the humor in it. Mm -hmm. right? Let's try it. Just a, one, a couple more lines, just for the, you know, just to take a look at it. Kusileus also agreed with Hesiod. He says that after chaos were produced, <coughs> these two, earth and love. But Parmenides says of birth that she contrived love, the first of all the gods. That contrived means what? Made up. It made made up. Right. Create. She was the parent. Invented? Birth is is signified with a capital B, which means what? It's a it's a personage. Is that right? Divine. Mm -hmm. Divine. Divine. Capital B. Divine. Well, I don't know. So, yeah. That's why, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, I'll tell you anytime. <laughs> um, by the way, does the next sentence is that true? Genesis. Thus. Many agree that love is most ancient among them. Did they? No. Was there any agreement? No. no. Thank you. Now you're reading. Hmm. Right. Now you're reading. Is that right, Ted? How do you read? Mm -hmm. What's reading? It's a curious game, isn't it? Yeah. It's a curious game, isn't it? I mean, it's there. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, yes. Okay, Parents look here. Reality. Now, notice the logic. I'm following it, okay? Just three sentences from this point on, shall mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Same sentence, go ahead. And being most ancient, he is cause of the greatest good for us. Uh, wait a minute. Does he need something other than the fact that it's old? That's it. That's all you have to do. Yeah, yeah. I would hope so. I hope so too. <laughs> Therefore, we're look, going to look for it, aren't we? There should be some benefit, mm -hmm. something useful about it, shouldn't it? So go yeah, ahead. Yeah. For I cannot say what is a greater good for a man in his youth than a lover, and for a lover than a beloved. Um, I wonder how serious he means that. For I cannot say in what way. And he's ignorant. Well, Pierre, there's a whole problem with the four at the beginning of that sentence, too. Yeah. And it's like supposedly that connects to the sentence okay. before it. Okay. Look. Right? <coughs> yeah, totally. It doesn't. What's he saying? Here's a youth. Mm -hmm. Love is the best thing. What's he saying? In that sentence? For I do not, come on, do it again. Can I can say, say what is a greater good for a man in his youth than a lover, and for a lover than a beloved? Well, what's he saying? Oh, that's a new treasure right? Wow. 
It's really hard to know what he's saying. It's good. So, he's the man. In his youth, what does he think would be the greatest thing? Lover. Find an old lover. To find a... Older lover. Older lover. Oh. One with wisdom. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah, would you not agree the next sentence is certainly true, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now she's reading. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> no, no, now you're reading. Go ahead, read it. For that which ought to guide mankind through all his life, if it is to be a good life, noble blood cannot implant in him so well, nor office, nor wealth, nor anything but love. Agree? That's what he says. Would you agree with it? I mean, no one has ever had any problems because of love. I don't know. <laughs> no, right? no, nothing like at all. No. Agree? I yeah. mean, anything oh. we can all agree upon is that statement. Yeah. Right? I mean, you never have any problems with love, right? Never get some trouble. It's better than everything. It's better than noble it's birth. Better than love. everything. Yeah. And yeah. Love. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good shit. Right? Off their couch at that point. Right. No, rather, it seems to cause all sorts of suffering, <laughs> even unto leading one to think that it actually is the cause of a bad life, oh. a good life. <laughs> what are you saying about the speech so far? People to suicide? Well, he keeps starting these sentences with Drink, or, drugs. as though these are conclusions <clears throat> from a previous argument, but they're just conjectures that haven't even been introduced before. One-liners. So what's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> Jesus said it. They're all one-liners. One-liners. <laughs> He's entertaining. They're all one-liners. So they're not falling gonna do? off their couches You're going to go through the speech now. Come on, what are you going to do? You're going to now read it carefully, right? And what do I mean by that? Read it from this point to yourselves, all right? See what you can collect. See what he's really saying. See, if all you keep is the claim, but not the evidence he gives to support it, then you'll just have a list of very nice things to say about his speech. Mm -hmm. But if you take a look at what he is offering as evidence and take a look at it, you'll find that the evidence is rather sparse, is it not? Or contradictory. Or not there. Take a look, right? Read yourselves for a few minutes, okay? The whole speech. <clears throat> Okay, one other thing, okay, in a speech. Would you not agree that uh, a good thing to do in any speech is to judge it by the conclusion? Mm -hmm. So go to the conclusion, memorize <coughs> that conclusion, keep it uppermost in your reading as you go through the paragraph. Let's go back into it, all right? The conclusion only, the last paragraph in his speech. Thus I say, then, then I say that of God's love, that of the gods, love is at once oldest and most precious and has the most power to provide virtue and happiness for mankind, both living and dead. <clears throat> What should it should what should it bring? Both <laughs> virtue and happiness where? Living Life as yeah. well as death. death. Right. Right. Both when you're alive and dead. Therefore, you should have some plenty of evidence to show that if you're engaged in this activity called love, you should be able to see its virtue and happiness both in life and death. Is that right? Uh, happy death. So therefore, you should have equal examples that what happens after you're dead. Should, would it not follow? Yeah, some necrophilia. Something like that. <laughs> oh, that's... Need shoes on. What a drop. <laughs> <laughs> after death. Come on, after. not, not loving dead. <laughs> Actually, he's got a, there's a countervailing point, but rather that it's a good that 
someone gets their soul sent up from the dead and a whole bunch of others too. Only after a very noble deed. You must sacrifice your life after, okay. the, after death to bring okay. you back. What are the sources he's going to use? Come on, he uses mythology, he uses... Theology. He uses the early Greeks he reflects back on, even Parmenides, Hasid, right? Hey, Homer. Right, so in the very Homer. middle of it. Mythology. In each speech, remember, we had a whole bunch of things? So we'd add that, would we not? I'm not here. <laughs> it's my book at booking age and horses. Let's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> find it. Who's got it? Uh -huh. Where's the phone? We're being too loud. It's the neighbor's calling. We're not here. <laughs> for those that are not, for those of you who are not familiar with that, that's a telephone. <laughs> <laughs> well, most people have cell phones. So yeah, this is a telephone. Never, never heard that. This <laughs> ancient <laughs> <He's> technology. <laughs> yeah. No. Speaking of it. ancient and older. Yeah. Okay. Well, how, how is it up now when you reread it? Come on. Two minutes. What is it? Got a nice ethical claim he makes about the liver. He's superior. Why is he superior? Got a couple of good points. Oh, the at the bottom of seventy-seven it says, "For a lover is more divine than the beloved, because since he is inspired." Now that's the claim. Now, do you see the rest of it that he gives us evidence to support that, and does it, Julie? Um, Don't give me the claim. Keep the oh. claim. Back up the evidence, otherwise you're not ready. Really. But in fact... No, it seems to be the opposite. I'll take out the word seems. Oh, well... <coughs> because the example he gives is where Achilles... As the beloved <coughs> avenges his lover Patroclus, so Patroclus dies, but Achilles Well, does he give sight some examples? Yes, he'd be willing to die a thousand deaths. That's the claim. What's the support? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not a support. Get them both, okay? How about Orpheus? What do you say about Orpheus? Yeah. Just to return to uh, Julie's point, the evidence seems to be that they honored Achilles more than Alcestis and sent him to the islands of the blessed uh, for lovers being more divine than the beloved, but that's not very good because Alcestis was cited earlier as a lover. In that example from Alcestis, mm -hmm. right, and Orpheus, will you take a look at that, please? He's supposed to show the, the role of love and the lover and the beloved, is he not? In that example, he's going to explain a myth, is he not? How does he do it? This is one of the great principles that you should know, by the way. Especially if you ever go to a pub and people talk about Greek gods, this is a good one. And heroes, right? Women kill them. I think it's in there, isn't it? Should, should you, I read it? you mean Orpheus? He yeah. went down to Hades yeah. Yeah, he got, to get uh, his wife, and he's only shown a phantom of her. Getting good. Go ahead. Uh, Thus the gods also honor especially earnestness and valor and mm -hmm. love. But Orpheus, Ogrios' son, they sent back unsuccessful from Hades, showing him a phantom of his wife for whom he came. 
but not giving her real self because they thought him soft, <laughs> being a zither player. <laughs> right, because as you know, all zither players are soft, are they not? <laughs> yeah, well, right. This is really a great principle that you should know, right? That's because he didn't have courage. <laughs> right, look, take a look at that sentence. What is he doing? Come on. Is the guy having a joke? Is he having fun? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you happen to know some zither players. Yeah, we may have some. <laughs> They're all soft. I never met a zither player who wasn't soft. <laughs> yeah, does that prove this relationship between mother and lover in the blood? That's what he's trying to do. For the lover would be less willing to be seen by his beloved than by all the rest of the world leaving the ranks by throwing away his arms. And he would choose to die many times rather than that. Uh, by the way, that's a great example. Uh, therefore, what should the lover do? Make sure he brings his beloved into battle with him. <laughs> and, if, and, if he, and if his beloved dies, oh. then he then can he do should whatever he wants. And he can to throw, away his, throw away his, his weapons and get out of there. Is that right? Throw away his weapons. That right. shows valor, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yes. Okay, see you next time. Get the speech, come on. See, Master yeah, wants speech. So you see what's going on here. So then you're going to get the next one. Yeah. Okay. okay.